Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we have got an interesting show today because we're going to be talking about the death of a parent, how it impacts you through the life cycle. And your dad died a couple of years ago, and we have a couple of people with us who have written books and done all sorts of things connected with them. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. And it, it is interesting to lose a parent because I never knew my life without my dad. Mm. So I think it's kind of an identity shift. Mm. All of a sudden, you don't have a parent in your life. It's like, who am I without my dad or my mom? Mm -hmm. So we are going to be talking with two people that are experts in this field, and they've also had it happen, mm -hmm. So, which is the best kind of expert, in my opinion. So we are going to be talking today with Barry Liner Grant. Hi, Barry. Hi. And Dina Babel. And I'll introduce Barry first. So Barry uh, lost her mom suddenly when she suffered a brain aneurysm. At the time, Barry was only in her 20s. Mm -hmm. um, she is a chief grief officer and a certified grief coach, and she is the creator of something called the Memory Circle. Mm -hmm. Her certification as a yoga and meditation teacher, combined with the sudden loss of her mother, prompted her personal mission to heal and help the bereaved through her blog, workshops, and gatherings. Welcome to the show, Barry. Thanks. And next to Barry is Dina Babel. And Dina is an expert in the field of fatherlessness and specializes in helping fatherless daughters reconcile their past. Her own father was murdered when she was just 13 years old. She is an award-winning author of the Fatherless Daughter Project, which is right here, Mom, mm -hmm. right next to you, Understanding Our Losses and Reclaiming Our Lives. And she is a sought-after speaker and has appeared on many media outlets, including the Today Show, CNN, and Fox News. So welcome to the show, Dina. Thank you. I'm excited to be here with you. I know. Now, now I, Heidi, you've got to say how you know these ladies. Okay, so we met through a new group called, help me out. The Grief Coalition. The Grief Coalition. We've kind of been talking about name changes. Yeah. So the Grief Coalition, so we met online. The secret circle. <laughs> it's a secret the grief circle people. of grief. <laughs> exactly. So it's people that are out there building awareness for hope and healing after a loss. Mm -hmm. And people that have been out there doing these kind of things. and. Uh, we met online, and this is the first time I met them in person, which I love. Yeah, <laughs> great. Uh, which is so great. Well, Thank ladies, uh, unlike Heidi, who was an adult, and her dad just died a couple of years ago, you guys had uh, lost your your Young mother adult. and your dad mm -hmm. early on, mm -hmm. yeah. and parent loss. Parent loss is our number one visit on our website, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is millions of people and visit the website, and that's the number one yeah. thing. And I have a feeling it's because it's dramatic and it's important and there's probably not a lot of long-term support around it. No, you know, in 1993, when my mom Ellen died very suddenly, there was nothing. Mm. People weren't saying the word grief. You were going back to work. You were getting over. There was nothing like there is today. And in 1994, Hope Edelman, um, wrote the book Motherless Daughters, and it wasn't until I saw that book that I even imagined that there was anybody else like me. You know, mm -hmm. subconsciously, that it is happening all right. around you, but until you read that someone else has similar feelings to you, experiences, um, sudden loss, there were just all of these women where I thought, oh, I can see myself. Mm -hmm. Well, and it must have been nice to have that book because for both of you, being in your 20s and being a teenager, there aren't a lot of people your age that have had parents die. No, mm -hmm. and you know, I didn't want to be the sad girl in the mm -hmm. room. You mm -hmm. know, bringing it up with friends, um, even bringing it up with family, um, it just, I didn't want to define myself that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for so long I tried not to mm -hmm. until I stepped into the work because I believed that that was the only way as a peer and now certified that I could actually help others be seen and heal, healed and heard in their grief because that's what we all so deserved. Mm -hmm. And to try to change um, the vernacular around the day-to-day -day conversation around grief, it should be as, as easy as we have a conversation about anything else, mm -hmm. as healthy and easy as we can talk about any other, um, like a birthday. Right. Imagine it being as easy as that to talk about loss. And isn't that what the Memory Circle does? You bring people together and have these conversations, these candid conversations? Yes, and I believe that being seen and heard is really the gift of being in circle, mm -hmm. that other people can relate to one another in that way. They can feel safe. 
um, and finding a place to go. You know, there was no place to go, so I always feel like when we make a circle of any kind, and you can do this even as a peer, mm -hmm. I just opened a door where there wasn't one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything more than that. I just thought, where can we sit shoulder to shoulder with others who've experienced loss of any kind? Mm -hmm. And it was the same way I met people on the page when I read that book. I was like, I'm just gonna open a door and make a circle, and we're gonna talk openly, and we're gonna create the safe, sp safe space, and it offers so much healing. You watch mm. it, you watch it unfurl. And I developed all kinds of modalities from writing, you know, all these tools that I bring to Circle. Speaking, writing, talking about um, connecting with spirit, talking mm -hmm. about um, creating memories, all of these ways, reframing days that come up on the calendar that feel mm. so big and important and also can feel so heavy. You know, how do we reframe those? How do we create a, a continuing relationship with those that we love? And so mm -hmm. these are all the things that we bring to circle. And as people start to share, it's amazing how the conversation just easily bubbles. Well, and, and I read that you also do kind of some body work because you're into yoga and meditation, which so is my mom. Mm. So she loved that. She was like, okay, I like that she's bringing <laughs> up the yoga meditation piece because, you know, trauma can get trapped in our bodies. Mm. Yes. Mm. And loss can get As trapped in our Bethel, bodies. Bethel Van der Kolb, Right. Body the body keeps, keeps the score. score. We, yes. we have a couple of uh, three shows with him mm -hmm. that he did here in New Amazing. York. Amazing. Yeah, I think movement. I think yeah. that's really the key. That movement, however you can find it, whether it's moving words through you to the page, yes. which we know is is very healing or a movement of the body mm -hmm. you know that's what I always say however you can move it through you because when it gets stagnant mm -hmm. that's when we start to get those aches and pains mm -hmm. and illnesses and so so um, Dina how did you move through your dad's death and you know, uh, with murder. Now, your mother died of an aneurysm suddenly on the beach. Mm -hmm. Completely different trauma, yeah. sudden loss, completely different. But, but sudden death in that, but also the high profile of murder mm -hmm. for a child your age. You know, I didn't even say the word murder until I was on the Today Show in my late 30s. Mm -hmm. I would always say he had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So, as you know, I'm a nurse. So I could say cardiac arrest and I was not That's lying. right, you were a heart nurse. Did you become mm -hmm. a heart nurse no. because of that? No. But cardiac arrest is true for anyone, so I felt like I wasn't telling a story. But a, a couple of differences from what Heidi experienced. So I was 13, and at that age, developmentally, what you really care about is how people perceive you and being connected to friends, mm -hmm. right? And I, I didn't know anyone who died. The only person I knew who had ever died mysteriously was Elvis, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of, of uh, fantasy in your thought yeah. of, is he really dead? Did this really happen? And I think for fathers, unfortunately, and you know, this was 1984, um, father loss was a little bit more accepted, okay? So in the 80s, 90s, even now, Sometimes there's not a nuclear family altogether, and it's usually the father that could leave, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times for me, the fatherlessness was not as emotionally, uh, as maybe Heidi went through from a grieving perspective. Barry. Barry. I mean, Barry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Although I did have I my know. own issues with sudden death, because my brother, it's funny that you're saying my name, because my brother died See, when I was only three. See, coming through. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All My here. brother died very suddenly, traumatically, mm. in a very traumatic car accident when I was 20. Mm. So I can identify with the suddenness and being in my 20s and, you know, yeah. how do I make sense of all this? Yeah. So I think for me, when he died, you know, pictures and everything were put up. Mm -hmm. And we just quit talking about it. Mm. And, you know, that was the way it was processed. My mom took me to a therapist, but, you know... I thought I was fine. So yeah. I said whatever I needed to say and moved on. Well, you were busy doing your school stuff. I was busy. And I was a busy. Teenager. But I went right. into school. I was the president of student body. And I came back to school, and there was, you know, where I got to get on the podium and call together everybody in the um, gymnasium. And I started crying. Mm -hmm. And um, my eyes water a lot, so nobody really knew it. But, you know, I thought this is right under the surface. Mm -hmm. And what happened, and the reason why I wanted to write this book, is obviously it's a journey. But for fatherlessness, it is a little bit more of a silent epidemic. It's one in three women who identify with being fatherless. Not necessarily death, it could be divorce, mm -hmm. abandonment, addiction, abuse, whatever it is. 
And we define fatherlessness as a lack of an emotional bond to your father. Mm -hmm. So it could be death or divorce. But when you said, you know, I can't identify, there's a part of me that's missing. Mm -hmm. Imagine growing up and always not knowing who that person was. Yeah. So I was dying to say, how does he walk? How does he talk? Mm -hmm. How does he, because we were in and out of each other's lives, right? Mm -hmm. And there's so much of me that is him. And you want to identify with that part of yourself. In fact, you have to identify with that part of yourself. Yeah. And so I needed to go back and uncover all this stuff that was bubbling right underneath mm -hmm. that would only come at, out if I was about to possibly go back through some type of reabandonment. Mm -hmm. So if it was a boy, a friend, mm -hmm. a job, but I felt skipped over or someone was gonna leave, even though on paper, and to look at me, I had it together. If I felt like something was gonna leave before I was ready for it to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would resurface and bubble on top. Yeah. So I really wanted to go back and I wanted to connect the spiritual, the mental, and the physical because spiritually, physically, mentally, if you know Louise Hay or anyone, mm -hmm. sure. how does this affect you in your body? How mm -hmm. does it affect you in all these ways? And funny enough, when I was doing the real work, I ended up having spine surgery. Mm. And if you go to Louise Hay and you talk about you know, your spine area and your neck area, it's stubbornness and not mm -hmm. letting go. Mm -hmm. And you know, I remember the publisher, I was with Random House, and they said the word murder. Mm. And I thought, no, 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 no. Mm. You know, we don't say that. And I thought, I couldn't even write it. And I thought, I've got to overcome this word because it, I'll just fall apart when I hear it. Mm. And for me to take my power back and really understand not what happened to him, which was a big part of what I needed to know, although I don't know because we never found out who did it. But what I really need to know is how I was defined because I didn't have him, him in my life, not him not being there, but how it defined me mm -hmm. as a person and how that loss continues through my journey. That's the, the interesting part. Yeah. So, so Barry, is any of this resonating with you? Yeah, I was just gonna say, the other thing that I didn't understand when I was younger that I understand now is that there was so much trauma mm -hmm. to first heal before I could heal any of the grief. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. I don't believe that you can do both at the same time. I don't yeah. know if you do, but I know I, I, I you, you can't. You can't. I yeah. teach a trauma class yeah. in Columbia. Yeah. <laughs> you, thank you, you. You've got to deal with the trauma right. first. Right. And Absolutely. I and no As one named. They weren't even naming grief. So forget mm -hmm. trauma. Okay. That you're, now I have to ask you, lady yes. experts here. What is trauma? What is dealing with trauma? I'm listening, and I and okay. The tra I got to deal with the trauma. What is yeah. that? What well, are the they talking sudden, about? The suddenness of mm -hmm. the person being there one day and not being there the next day. And what does, what does that cause me to do? How do I feel? How did you guys feel? You know, for me... Or how did you express her? Yeah, for me, I totally shut down, but it would come out in weird moments. Like I got in a car wreck when I was 16. Someone hit my car mm -hmm. and I went out there. I was so mad mm -hmm. and I blurted out, my dad got killed. Mm -hmm. It's like bizarre. Mm -hmm. And my girlfriend was in the car like, okay, you're tripping out. And I'm like, no, but there's so much going on here. And I think secondarily, another thing that you go through when you have trauma like this is you start to forget your own dreams. Mm -hmm. So everything that I wanted to become put was put on hold. Mm -hmm. I went the safe route, I went to nursing school, I really wanted to be a writer. I wanted to move to LA. I wanted to do all this, but I just, I put it all on hold because well, you just I, don't know. Yeah, and, and I wanted to do things to continue to make her proud. Mm. I chose things ah. that I thought I'm going to live Aww. on behalf of all mm -hmm. the things she knew about me before she died that she'd be proud of. God. So I thought, oh gosh, she would never want me to define myself by grief work. Mm -hmm. My goodness, she'd be so good and angry at me for making that my life's purpose. <laughs> Uh, I made it up. Right. I, ma yeah. I, ma I made it up. I love it. it, it it's a story, isn't it? Right. The it, story we tell ourselves. It's a way to stay connected. It it's a way to it stay is. connected. It is. And we I, all try to stay connected. I got into sales. My dad was a salesman. Oh. I mean, you do things because you, you're tr like when people would say you look like him. Mm, <sighs> you act too. like you're funny like him. Of course I am. <laughs> I mean, I could look at my mom and see everything I am of my mom, but mm -hmm. my dad, like, give me a connection. Yeah. So back to the trauma question. The best thing you can do for someone in trauma is 
bring up a loving memory. Mm -hmm. Truth. Because they get to relive it. Truth. Yeah. Like, I remember when your mom said blah, blah, blah. I mean, we were talking before the show, and she was like, do you ever get signs? And I was like, and at the same time, we said, ladybug. ladybug. Oh, I love that. Because <laughs> a ladybug is a sign. Now, we've yeah. never seen each other in person. Do you not think our parents weren't getting together oh, going, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's connect them? Absolutely. I mean, I love there's this. all these moments that if you're open, and when you're in deep grief mm -hmm. and trauma, you don't see any of that. Nope. When you start to heal, you start seeing everything. Okay, now, what do you recommend me? I'm hearing what you're saying, and I'm really a little stuck. Mm -hmm. where, where do I go? Give me some first steps. What do you suggest? I, I always ask people if they have asked other family members for stories. Mm -hmm. And I'm with you on the mm -hmm. story. I perked right up on that because I believe that you need to, I used to say real quick, my mom died. You know, mm -hmm. if someone brought up something like a yeah. back to school day or whatever. And then I learned to say, I lost my mother, Ellen, mm -hmm. to make her a person. Mm -hmm. So say their name. And so if a person is coming to you and they've lost a loved one, ask a story about them, ask their name. Bring them into the conversation. Bring them forward. Bring them into I like the, this the every day. Mm -hmm. because, because oftentimes people want to know how they died. Right. And we want to talk about how, how they, they lived. lived. And let me tell you, when some, especially mm -hmm. coming from someone who was murdered, in our world today, if you're part of a crime like that, mm -hmm. you had to have done something to cause it. Mm -hmm. You had to have possibly been so a bad kind of person. Mm -hmm. It's the way... These well, we all want to feel safe. People don't just don't right. be randomly murdered. Of course murder. you do. Right. Even though and we this, do. <laughs> this was random. But the right. reality is, it, what you just said is so powerful. Tell me about them, not yes. what happened. Because right. sometimes they say you what happened, and then that. when we tell the story, they're done. I'm like, right. wait and a minute. We, we, there's you're more stuck things. You're, cracked you're open. stuck with yeah. it. You're stuck with it. It's yeah. all over you, right? Yeah. We want to be able and, to move and you, you don't and get move out. the trauma out of our bodies yes. and talk about, like you said, memories and how they lived and who mm -hmm. they were. And now I want to say something because Scott died in 1983. Mm -hmm. Heidi's brother. And he was 17. And with the coming of the internet, we had people start coming out probably 10 years ago with Facebook? Yeah. Or a little well, less? Yesterday we had a message. Yesterday we got a, a boy that, that went to high school with him. We haven't heard from him in, oh, in 30 yeah, years. That changed my life. I love that. And he was such a wonderful person and I want you to know he's not forgotten. Yeah. Yesterday. Now what, what I What did that mean to you? Oh it's fabulous. Mm -hmm. It's fabulous. But what I'm thinking is P you can ask people for memories on the yes. internet now. Mm -hmm. My mother's birthday is coming up. If are there any tell memories me that you could could you tell me some stories? Ask mm -hmm. for and photos. You, yeah, ask for the other thing I did. My great yeah. aunt started to just send me on my birthdays pictures of my That's mom awesome. with right. little stories on the back of them, mm -hmm. and they're so magical. And probably pictures you've never seen before. Pieces of her life that I didn't know. That's cool. She was a realtor, yeah. and the people who she had sold houses to started to tell me stories about mm. things. And wow. I thought, this woman who I spoke to multiple times a day, who spoke to my sister Dana multiple times mm -hmm. a day, how on earth did she also help the woman that was going through a divorce buy this house and teach her how to wear red lipstick. Mm. Like they came out of the woodwork to tell me these stories and yeah. it made such a 360 degree view of my mother as a mm. person in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Part of a charity, mm -hmm. part of starting a foundation, part of uh, being a great uh, a mother at school who did all of these fundraisers. Like all mm -hmm. these things that she did that really made the fullness of yeah. her away from me, a mother. And then what I began to do is start to, and I don't know if this is true for you too, Learn to remother myself. Yeah. Yes. So My friend like Byron that. Katie, I don't know if you've ever heard of Katie. Of course. But she does the work and she, I love it. She holds her face and she mm -hmm. says, Mother yourself. <laughs> and at so, first I felt like it was a betrayal. So I'm wondering, Barry, for those out there that need to mother themselves mm -hmm. or father yes, themselves or parent it? themselves, what does that look like? For me, it was allowing for people to care for me in a okay. way that I, I, I I became so fiercely independent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so resilient mm -hmm. and yeah. so you're so strong. Mm -hmm. I answered yeah. to all of that because I was very much alone in the world. That's mm -hmm. how I felt. Even though I was supported by family, even though I was supported by friends, all of a sudden you're, you are the instant adult, yeah. mm -hmm. the matriarch, yeah. the, you know, people, and people will put that on you, but you'll mostly put it on yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I allowed in the 
teacher that felt delicious. Mm. I allowed in the friend who was a good listener. Mm -hmm. I allowed in those activities that made me feel connected to her spirit as well. Um, but there was just something about, there's a warmth. There's a certain warmth that I lacked and also the notion of being proud of myself, putting mm -hmm. myself in situations where I could learn to be proud of myself so that I wasn't like this. walking through life. Because your parent yeah. usually is the one that's proud of you. Right, and she was the yeah. ultimate cheerleader. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you hit Ellen's bar, you like, you, <laughs> made, you made it. The you gold made it. standard. Yeah, you made it. It sounds so, like your father. Totally. Right? And, then, yeah. and then I learned to do it for myself. Yeah, and, that's great. You know, in my 50s, Still doing it. Yeah. Still being proud of myself. And yeah. that's the lesson I even say to my girls. Yeah. I like that. Do so what makes you proud of yourself. I what love about this. you? What did you I do want to say I didn't have the exact same experience as she did in the fact that my parents divorced when I was three. He was in and out of my life until I was thirteen. And so what was really hard for me is I didn't have the proud dad thing. I had to kind of make it up, mm -hmm. make up those ideas. I'm not saying he wasn't, but I couldn't say for sure he was. And I think what comes along with the unknown, and I get a lot of girls on my site that say I never knew who he was. Like if I post something, they're like, this isn't the right site for me because my dad wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I think the reality is, is you have to allow a stand in. And it could be a stand-in. It doesn't even have to be a male. Mm, but I, like I had I had I men in and around my life that I would not let in mm -hmm. because it was a betrayal or because they weren't gonna love me that mm -hmm. way. And my dad's brother tried to get in many times. Mm -hmm. He lived in a different state. And for me to let him in, I would have completely broken. Mm -hmm. So I had to wait till I was old enough to be able to receive it. And I really went a long time without letting myself receive it because I didn't want him to see me fall mm -hmm. apart and feel like he had to take care of me, right? right? So, Which so is Dina, bizarre. I'm wondering, what is the Fatherless Daughter Project? Mm -hmm. Let me just grab this. It's a book. Yeah. What is it? It's about understanding who you are and understanding who you're okay. going to become. Mm -hmm. um, it, it meets you where you were developmentally mm -hmm. when it happened because obviously I have a nursing background and my friend who's a psychologist helped me put this together mm -hmm. and we did a survey of about 10,000 women. We probably have about 100,000 now. This was in 2016. And um, we went back through and decided and said, okay, if you were one years old when your father died, this is what was going on with you developmentally. Mm -hmm. When you have a baby, when mm -hmm. you're the same age as your father who died, what is that going to look like? When you get married, how are you going to date? How are you okay. going to go into the workforce? Mm -hmm. All these things. But I'll tell you what's interesting. When I, when I did this book, I had five publishing houses at the time in a bidding war, wow. which it sounds great, mm -hmm. right? Every editor was fatherless. Interesting. And they said to me, this book will be evergreen. So it was 2016. I just got an email the other day that Beijing's gonna mm -hmm. is gonna buy the rights. So that is what almost seven years, mm -hmm. and it is still evergreen. It's still yeah. thriving because I like Heidi. Uh, you know, hope was a big part for all of us. Mm -hmm. And I went into the bookstore, and there was nothing, nothing. about mm -hmm. father loss. I hear that a lot. Nothing. I hear that. And a lot. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna write it. I love it. So that's why it's here. It's everything you could ever need, and it Wonderful. is evergreen. And how about the editors? That's that's magical to me. Yeah. I feel like I'm a magnet for motherless daughters. I feel like it kept knocking. Me too. Mm -hmm. I feel like it just kept knocking. Yeah. I'd be like checking out at the grocery, and I would hear the woman say, "Oh, my mom loved mm -hmm. you know whatever it was life. that I was buying." And I would hear <laughs> past tense, like my ears would perk up, and I would say, "Oh, did your mom die? Is she with mm -hmm. us? She died. What was her name?" Mm -hmm. We'd have like a chit chat, but it yeah. was like it was really it was like. Some kind of magnet. I feel like mm -hmm. it was like a the, the call. Yeah. It was like mm -hmm. the knock like was it. there, and yeah. yeah, I just think there's not enough of it. Mm -hmm. And I encourage even a peer group. Like I said, if if you need a circle, make a circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. If you need a circle, make a circle. And I love how you're both building awareness for such an important topic and helping people find hope mm -hmm. again you after too, parent both loss. Of you. Yeah. And sorry about your son and your brother. Thank you. That'd yes. be really hard. Yes. We are, we are all doing this as a tribute to them and to, and, and to be, like my mother always says, to show people that we have found hope after loss. And happiness. And, yes, exactly. Yeah, and, and new life. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it's and okay, they, it's okay to grieve and it's okay to heal. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. I think, they, I think I always say it's like two, we have two hands, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the joy lives in this one and the grief mm -hmm. lives in this mm -hmm. one and we're all carrying it but mm -hmm. we we learn to move forward some days it's lighter some days it's heavier like you said around yeah. those holidays yeah those, the holidays those, those holidays or the the day mm -hmm. of loss or uh the day that we came into the world right they right. became a biggie yeah i bet I, I think what gets us caught sometimes is living in the imagined future mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what it would have been like imagining become, right? what mm -hmm. it would have been like we get yes. caught into that imagination and there's fantasy in that a lot mm -hmm. of fantasy because they don't have to be who they especially for me because he was 42 years old and it's interesting when i was 42 and I just had a baby, and my mm -hmm. daughter was like three or four. And unbeknownst to me, this was happening to me. And my husband came walking in the front door, and our front door has glass. And my daughter ran and said, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Total trigger. Mm -hmm. Age matching, I was 42. Wow. I was three when my parents divorced, mm -hmm. and I thought, this little girl is running over there to safety. And mm -hmm. what did I do after that? Yeah. And you start to realize, like, it was okay, it's still okay to grieve that inner child. Mm -hmm. It's not okay to let the inner child get in the front seat, though. I like that. That's a <laughs> great note yeah. to end on. Let's, uh, yeah, let's end on that note. It's good <laughs> Amazing. To, to remember. So tell us where people can find you. TheMemoryCircle.com and at the Memory Circle on Instagram. Okay. okay. I'm DeanaBabel.com and also the Fatherless Daughter Project, Facebook, social, any, any kind of social media spots you can find me. That's awesome. Well, it's been so great to have you guys on the Thank show you. today. And Thanks have for having you us. Have you meet these ladies in person. I love it. The since coalition my dad, will never be the same. <laughs> exactly. Since my dad died two years ago, I'm, I'm learning a lot from both of you. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for watching this show today. And Heidi and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless. The loss of a loved one can leave you feeling depressed, angry, alone, lost. But you don't have to face this journey on your own. Open to Hope is a free community for anyone who has experienced loss. Find support. Find help. Find hope. Give grief a voice at Open to Hope. For more information, find us at opentohope.com.